Welcome to another episode here with Queen City Reefs and more. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. For those that don't know me, my name is Dennis. This is Queen City Reefs. I have uh, this as my main platform to share all my videos, but I also have a Facebook group, uh, Queen City Reefs, and an Instagram, as well I just created a TikTok. So, you know, all of them are called Queen City Reefs. And please make sure that if you have any of those platforms, to go there and follow and you know like and subscribe and all that you know all that good stuff that being said today we're going to talk about this 10 gallon quarantine tank so on one of my previous videos if you haven't been following along if you haven't i, I hope that if you after after you watch this video and you actually like it uh that you consider subscribing and that way you can follow along my journey here with uh reefing mainly so on one of my previous videos i showed that this tank right here had turned into a fish quarantine because of a new uh, fish that I had gotten and that fish was a, a small harlequin tusk which wasn't showing too much color because it was literally about an inch an inch and a half long Australian to harlequin tusk but that guy for whatever reason did not make it he was eating great everything was good in this tank as you can see the corals have been doing great in here prior and after so I don't think it was a tank issue. Uh, my, the tank, the the fish might have had something that I was not aware of. Uh, it did not show any signs of ick or velvet, but it just little by little dwindled away. And therefore, I went back and turned this tank back into a quarantine tank. Uh, I ended up using the Innovative Marine 15 gallon that you've seen on previous videos. If you haven't, please make sure to check those out. Uh, I used that as a quarantine tank for corals when I'm put the fish in here but ever since now the fish is no longer with us I decided to move all the corals back so I can complete what the 15 gallon innovative marine was meant for uh, so if you want to see that make sure again to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're able to see any future videos that I post I try to post them weekly that being said this tank has now been converted into a quarantine tank now the only thing i'm actually quarantining for my tank here and it's already been through quarantine i just need to make the space for it is you'll see this clam here i'm not sure exactly what kind of clam it is i didn't ask when i got it and this pectinia uh, that is on the left side and i'll bring you closer here in a second those are the only two things that i was quarantining uh, and they actually are done with quarantine, but I haven't I don't actually have a place for them So therefore I had to uh, I had to put them in here for now because I need to make space for them And once I move when I'm moving into the innovative marine, I should have the space for at least a clam That being said the rest of these corals are actual cells and this is going to be a self plug here I actually sell corals on Facebook and I sell corals on eBay and so some of these are for from Facebook and most of them are from eBay so uh, What you'll see here on the right side are a bunch of frags of my PC rainbow a frag here of the um, Greens bird's nest and then some bubblegum digitata You'll see a, a worldwide corals on the left side here of the after party as well as some of my blue stag frags so a lot of these are going out. Some will still remain. I'll continue trying to sell them on Facebook. If you're interested, you know, check out uh, my Facebook page, which is where I put most of these things. And I'll include my eBay information on the comments on the description below so that if you want to check that out, please feel free to do so. If you uh, are interested, uh, you can send me a message stating that you came from YouTube, that you're subscribed, and I'll give you 15% uh, off of whatever you choose to purchase from the eBay store. So that being said, let's talk about uh, this tank real quick. So I can tell you the corals are doing great, and it's odd for me because they weren't doing that great on a 15-gallon innovative marine tank. Uh, the corals look to be very... Uh, um, like stressed polyps weren't out even these zoas right here weren't doing great they were closed up in there and I moved them in here and they're all opened up now and so that just tells me that the tank is just not mature enough to hold these at least that's what I'm thinking because this tank even after the fish died which actually was a while back but I kept the tank running and I put the I moved the corals in here and in here you can see the polyp extension you can see them doing very well and so 
This tank has been running for over six months now and maybe even more. I'm really bad with time. But it just tells me that, you know, tank maturity and stability is what really makes corals thrive. And it's tough to do that in a new tank. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible because I've seen videos like from Jake Adams and other people that have set up tanks in, in a very little time and then they put corals and they're doing great in there. But I just have never had success setting up a uh, tank, um, brand new tank, and then expecting it to thrive, corals to thrive in a brand new tank. Normally, they do after a few months of uh, the tank running. All right, so I'm going to bring you a little bit closer now. Let's start with this clam. This baby right here is huge. He is the size of at least a softball. Actually, maybe a little bit bigger than a softball. It, it is a really decent size, and this will definitely be going into my 310 Mega Matrix Aquarium. I'm definitely happy to finally have a clam. I just, you know, was waiting for the right moment and the right deal because these things, I feel like they've gone up in price. But here is one of the frags that will be going out. This is a piece of my bubblegum digitata. Now, of course, you know, you'll see different sizes of this because I normally when I frag and I get more frags out of that frag, I try to, you know, just use all of them. I hate throwing any of these away. So you'll see a variety of sizes, but you know, um, again, you know, this is this is one of the other ones. And so I'm going to bring you closer to some of the other ones that I care for. Uh, the rest of them, I don't think we want to really, you know, drag this video too long to show every single one of them. The main goal really was to talk about this quarantine tank and, you know, what I'm using to run it. And so while I show you the corals, I'll, I'll do that. Back there, you'll see a pectinia that I picked up from TRSC Aquatics. Shout out to Tristan at TRSC Aquatics. Uh, this is a huge piece and wasn't expect. I mean, I, I kind of knew it was already going to be a colony. I just didn't expect it to be this big of a colony. And so I definitely have to figure out where I'm going to actually put this on the 310 mega matrix. Uh, that being said, again, this is a 10 gallon tank, a uh, 10 gallon that I got from Petco at the dollar per gallon sale. So it cost me 10 bucks, mainly for filtration. You'll see here that I'm using a C chem title uh hanging a back filter that has the ability to skim the water from the top but being that i keep my water level a little bit higher because i don't like seeing the water level come you know here by the rim so i keep it above that and once i start once i start seeing it drop then that's when i actually know that it's time to add some top off water because this is one that i am keeping the top off manually i'm i don't have an automatic top off on this one because it's not doing so great at skimming, this is what I use for skimming the top. And let me tell you, there is a lot of skim that builds up. So this has actually come in handy. It's a, it's a skimmer filter. I'm not exactly sure exactly which one. If I can figure it out and find it when I purchased it, I'll put it in the comments below. But it's worked great for me. It keeps the top free of the oily substance that builds up on these tanks. And so... I have to clean it maybe once a week or so. For lighting, I'm using the this AI Hydra, uh, the, the Prime, uh, which is uh, pretty cool, pretty good light. Uh, you know, as you can see, it covers most of everything here. On the 10 gallon, I keep the SPS in the middle and then the clam and the pectinia are on the edges. Uh, and then for flow, I'm actually using an MP10, which is doing pretty great in here. So. No complaints on this little tank. It's worked for me. It, it you know, it, it has actually, you know, I've kept coral here long term and it's, in, you know, it encrusts and everything. So I haven't had any issues. And the only thing I would say is that it took a while for corals to do great in here uh, whenever, whenever I first set it up. And so it just took some time for me to keep running it and adding bacteria and all that. And eventually it settled and it became uh, mature, I guess you could say. And I was able to... I was able to then, you know, add corals and keep them here long term until they sold or, or while they were quarantining for 30 plus days. And so, uh, yeah, everything, everything's running perfect. I decided to turn off the flow in here, especially the filters, because I wanted, you know, just to give a shot of this tank from up top. And you can see that from the side, this has more of a blue hue. And then from up top, you can see the blue outline but it's more of a greenish now to my eye it's less green than that but i can still see it uh, then you'll just give you a quick top down of all the other corals that are in here you'll see right there in the middle those are frags of the wwc after party 
and then those two um, Ghanis are new Ghanis that will be going into my tank, and you can see the polyp extension on those, are, it's pretty good. On the Innovator Marine, for whatever reason, again, I just would, it wasn't seeing that they were retracted, so. And there you have it. This is a regular Aquion 10 gallon tank that I bought from Petco. And so, um, you know, for quarantining purposes, with a stand that I bought that I found secondhand, which is a little bit too dark to see, my apologies. Uh, it is actually doing pretty good and I'll continue running it and using it for frags until I set up my bigger frag system. And for now, you know, with the amount of corals that I sell, it's not enough for me to fill up that frag system anyways. But of course, I do need to consider the fact that it's going to take some time to mature and stabilize. Therefore, I'm trying to get it running as soon as possible. All right, what do we have here? <laughs> You're thinking another tank setup. Well, sort of. What I'm doing here is I am going to start trying to culture brine shrimp myself. Uh, I have that copper band butterfly that till this day has not eaten any frozen flakes or pellets. And therefore, I want to see if I can get it to eat these uh, brine shrimp. And so I think I started thinking, why not culture them and then maybe even sell them to the locals here if, if they you know want to buy some adult sized brine shrimp. Um, if I ended up culturing too many more than my systems can handle, whatever the case is. But those that know I have a ton of tanks, so it probably shouldn't be a problem. But, you know, why not make a little bit of money to invest back into the tanks uh, for new equipment and all that good stuff and corals and fish and so on and so forth. Anyway, so this is what's happening here. If you want me to walk you through what I do and hopefully become successful at to hatch from their eggs and then grow them to adult size and if you're curious to see how I did it and how I continue to hopefully be successful with this you know bring you along on a video let me know leave a comment below if that's something you like to see and I'll definitely try to you know film this and walk you through what I do and all that just you know leave it in the comments below and let me know here's a quick shot of the mega matrix and how it's doing uh, I'll definitely give you an update on a future video that's more in depth than just this quick pass through but I figured I'd just show y'all where it's at. Here is one of this mangrove tank and the Aquatop 28 gallon that I have in here, which you'll see two naked clownfish. Uh, future, future update, future update for sure. And last but not least, here is the anemone tank. Man, look at how many anemones are in there now. And uh, soon I'll, you know, it'll be full where you won't even be able to see the rock work. Here's the Innovative Marine. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to now finally uh, uh, stock up with what's going to be uh, pretty cool, I think. And so definitely stay tuned for that. I have the lights off because there's nothing for me, no reason for me to keep the lights on for sure. And finally, you'll see the, uh, <laughs> the frag tank here in the 40-gallon breeder that I have yet to do anything with. Uh, but I promise that soon I will start working on these. All right, guys, gals, thank you so much for tuning in. I definitely appreciate you sticking around to the end of this video. If you liked it, please make sure to hit that like button. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, if, again, if you have Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, make sure to follow me on those platforms as well. Uh, for now, I will let y'all go, and I will catch y'all on the next one. <laughs>